So welcome on the stage, uh, founder and CEO of Eleven, Mikael Gegefeldt. You got that genes. <laughs> you didn't know about that, well. How do you Come. Right. Shake hands. <laughs> oh, we'll shake hands, okay. Next time we'll hug. So, can you, can you show us? Yeah, where's uh, the tattoo? I did it a long time ago. Um, uh, I was hoping it was going to be you somewhere very You need to show it so we can see in the camera. <laughs> Where do we have the camera? There you go. Look at that thing. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's a good thing it's not <laughs> so in your cute. butt, because then you'd have to show us your butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mikael, who are you? Who I am? Uh, my name is Michael Gigafelt, and I'm the founder and CEO of Eleven. Uh, we started a company in 2004 uh, with the goal that we should provide the entire Sweden with beauty products uh, wherever you lived. So that was a goal, and I think we have come a long way from what we wanted, so. Mm. So today we're going to talk about retargeting yeah. and how you've done this together with two other players. Who are they? Uh, the first one is the Klarna, uh, whom we have worked with since two, uh, 2005. I think that was the year it started, actually. Mm. Uh, and we were one of the 100 first customers to Klarna. Uh, we still work with them, so that must say something about how satisfied we are with the with the services. The second one is uh, Recheck It, which is a newer relationship which we started in 2014 mm. and which we have intensified in June this year. Mm. So we have added a lot of new services during the latest months uh, from Recheck It. Mm. Uh, the re reason why we chose them was because they are very hungry and result driven and they are a suitable fit for Eleven. So later on today, we're actually going to hear from uh, Rakuten, and uh, they rely heavily on retargeting. Yeah. And uh, so I have this kind of idea that we only talk about retargeting when it comes to emails and then abandoned carts. Uh, do you think that we in this area are a little bit behind? I don't think we are. Or what are some obstacles maybe as yeah, well? I don't think that we are that be far behind, but uh, I think we have been living in an e-commerce business that's been growing really fast and the competition hasn't been that tough for many of the companies. Uh, during the latest years, the competition has toughened up uh, very, very much more for many of us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, um, it's a natural step to become better at retargeting, remarketing and other services to win back customers. Okay. So I think it's a, a natural process. Mm. So uh, how does a retargeting journey start? Where did you see the first like needs for that? I think we, 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 we changed the entire company recently. Uh, we looked at the entire organization and we, we saw where we need, had problems. We uh, acquired a lot of new people to Eleven, which had uh, a lot of knowledge and passion about remarketing and, and marketing in general. And two of them are sitting here somewhere today. Um, so that's where we started and we went through the entire business model to sh see where we could reclaim the most customers. And uh, we, when, we, when you look at uh, the checkout and uh, how many people that you are losing in the checkout, unfortunately, uh, it was easy to start it there. Okay, so you started with checkout. So what other channels did you guys choose to try to get your customers back? Uh, we actually, we started with uh, the emails, uh, abandoned basket emails. Uh, well, the reason behind that was because it was the most cost efficient way uh, to try to reclaim it. And we had a tight budget when we were redoing the entire company, so we want to find the best way, the mo most cost efficient way to do it. Mm. And we found out that for us it was email. Mm. Okay. So, um, and also, like, one of the problems you said that with, with Klarna Checkout was that it was an iframe, which means you can't really control it exactly. So how did you guys uh, handle that situation? Uh, at first, actually, we, had, uh, we have three fantastic in-house developers that created a hotfix for, so we could get the most basic data out of the checkout. Uh, it did work, but uh, 
perhaps we want more information and we want to be have a more stable solution. So what Klarna did uh, was to create an API so that ReCheckIt could have a fully integrated solution to provide us with it. So we don't have to worry about if the, our beautiful hotfix mm -hmm. stopped working because of we, some update in PHP or something. Mm -hmm. So can you describe the result of this? What, you, what, what were you achieved? We have done a lot of A-B testing and we are pretty early, f I have to say, in the process. But uh, what we have seen so far is that the abandoned emails that we sent out have a conversion rate of 7%, which is, I think, is very good. Uh, but we still have a lot of work to do there. Um, so we have, we have things to do left. <laughs> and it was also crucial that Klarna and ReCheckIt both cooperated with you together. Yeah. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I think the best part is because we are very busy when you're doing the entire company and looking at all the, there's Michael, when you're looking at the, all the marketing strategies you have, uh, you need the partners that can cooperate with each other uh, and make things just happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, both Klarna and Rishekit had a good, uh, good discussions where we didn't have to be part of the discussions always. But I think we also are very result-oriented at 11. Uh, we also always want to have a part, mm -hmm. but we didn't need to. That's the most important thing. I understand there was actually a <laughs> there was a 2:30 a.m. night where you stayed up with uh, Clarence and Recheck it. What was that <laughs> night like? <laughs> Besides terrible. <laughs> I, that was a terrible night. Um, we had we had a problem with the checkout, and uh, a lot of customers couldn't finish their purchases. Uh, that seems like a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a large problem. So we, I think we had half the orders we should have. Uh, so we were get pretty stressed. Uh, yeah. And when I get stressed, I be become pretty rude also. <laughs> so uh, I feel sorry for the, the, the woman in the customer service at Klarna who <laughs> got my call. So is this a fu uh, an official public apology for that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. But I have apologized to Louise and Michael <laughs> several times. <laughs> But um, actually, the problem wasn't with Klarna, uh, which they assured me it wasn't, but I didn't believe them at the time. Yeah. Uh, but the problem was with another supplier. But the great thing was that Klarna still, even though they know, knew that it wasn't their problem, they still continued to help us solve the problem. We had Klarna checkout developers, we had customer support, we had a full staff of people from Klarna that was up with, uh, that helped us up uh, until 2 a.m. or something. Mm -hmm. And Michael was with us the entire time also, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you also set up uh, emails uh, to customers who had, hadn't been shopping for a long time. Yeah. And you did some, some A-B testing too. Yeah, we've done a lot of A-B testing because it's, it's difficult to know which kind of email you should, should send out to the customers. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have found out is that most of the customers we have contacted, uh, they didn't quit the checkout process just because they thought it was too expensive, but it was more that they were unsure of if the product was right for them. So we have tried to see if can we segment the customers more so that those who are price sensitive perhaps can have an add-on, a gift with purchase, or in worst case, a discount code. Uh, and we can focus on customer service actions for those, those, those customers that want to have help instead. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you set up a process like this, obviously you have to kind of fine tune it. So can you sort of talk about that, um, what it's like to fine tune something or what you sort of fine tune? Uh, we tried, we, uh, tried to, to fine tune everything. Uh, the process we had from the beginning was that we just wanted to out, get something out first uh, yeah. so we can collect data. So we started very broad. We just had the customers divided by country. Okay. And then we have added the gender and uh, age and shopping history mm -hmm. to try to sort them out and give more re relevant data to okay. them. So. Interesting. Some time ago, we discovered a pop up uh, in the checkout. So when the customer hesitates uh, to finish their purchase, we can see this pop up. Uh, what can you tell us about that function? Uh, it's one of my favorite functions, actually. Um, if the customer 
is in the checkout and uh, they are inactive or they try to close the tab, we present a beautiful pop-up here <laughs> uh, that gives the customer um, the option to have the entire basket sent to the email address instead. Uh, that is very helpful for someone like me that's very that have a hectic schedule, to say yeah. the least. <laughs> You're a busy uh, dude. <laughs> yeah. I can start a purchase and uh, I can forget about it. And sometimes when I get back, I have to f continue working. So mm -hmm. in this case, I can just type in my email address, have, it, have the basket sent to my email address, and late evening, I, when I'm a bit more relaxed, uh, I can finish the purchase from mm -hmm. another device also. So yeah. mm -hmm. that yeah. is a great function. And can you say something about the results of this? It's a bit too early because we have just started testing it. Uh, but we, what we could, what we see on overall with the on-site also is that we have increased the conversion rate for all our abandoned basket actions with 96 percent year on year. So last year, from October to this year, October, and that is a fantastic increase. Um, and we recover. We covered 39 percent of all the the purchases that would otherwise be lost mm -hmm. in some way, either through that we get their email address, so we can continue helping them decide about purchasing, uh, or to make a direct purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we also have seen is that the the average basket value on the recovered emails mm -hmm. is 26. 0.5 percent mm. uh, higher than the average order size on the site. Sounds amazing. Yeah. So, so I understand really you also wanted the emails to look a certain way. Is it, so what did you want them to look like? Uh, first and foremost, we, we, it was crucial it had the same graphical profile and it oh. should be easy to understand uh, for off the sender and it should also be easy to continue the purchase. There they are. <laughs> uh, and we are constantly trying uh, to evolve these emails to find mm. the best solution so mm. we can have a, a more friendly approach to it. Uh, so uh, also, how did you guys decide um, how long it should take before the pop-up happens? What is the best time? I think the best time is also, I mean, I don't, there, there is no absolutes in yeah. our business, I think. But uh, f for us, the, we are using uh, ReCheckIt standard time at the moment, which we have we have tried uh, different. Uh, but it's working very, very, very well for us. Uh, and it is for a desktop, it's 30 seconds of inact uh, inactivity. And for tablets and mobiles, it's uh, 15 seconds. Okay. Uh, and in addition, if the user is trying to close the tab or try to switch the page or something horrible, we will also present it. Hmm. Okay. So can you see any differences bet depending on what di devices the customer uses? Because you yeah. mentioned different times as well. Yeah, I think if you're on a mobile or a tablet, you're more limited on the amount of pages that you're looking mm -hmm. at. Uh, so we have to be more direct with everything we're doing. Um, and also, as probably most of you here know, the conversion rates on mobiles are horrible <laughs> compared to desktop <laughs> and tablets. Uh, so there are some natural challenges you have to taking into consideration. And I think you did some kind of A-B testing when it came to this too. Uh, can you show us some results of that? Uh, this was... Uh, we actually, we have done a lot of things. And mm. uh, the, the, the large part what we could see is that when we presented in different times and the different looks, so we can get a higher average basket on it, mm. as we talked about oh. earlier. So. Um, I think it's the yeah. sum okay. for everything. So I understand you also have <laughs> probably quite a few plans in the future for retargeting. Uh, what are your plans? What's next? Uh, A-B test everything and do it continuously. Uh, we have a policy that we should A-B test everything on the site and uh, yeah, also in the, in the organization. Uh, but I think the most important thing will be to try to make the, the pop-up and uh, the emails more easy to understand and more customer focused or customer service oriented instead mm -hmm. uh, and also to try to collect more addresses from 
if a, if a customer clicks on an address from the email, we should have it follow them all the way right. so we can uh, earlier pick up if they're leaving the site, not just in the checkout. Okay. So um, I understand that you obviously, Klarna and WeCheck it, it was, you had a really good experience with them. Um, and I think, Mikael, you were involved with that, weren't you? So how, how was that? <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily we record all the calls to support, <laughs> so you're going to hear Michael now. Uh, Post them on Facebook. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> I, I'm actually going to tie it to something, probably the only relevant thing I'm going to say over these two, two days, but I think when I met Michael a couple of years ago, he was, he was starting to feel victim to the founder's disease, I would say, where you let your vision interfere with the operational decisions and, and the experts who actually know what to do and when, um, which is a very common thing. And I have had the opportunity to meet like 50,000 founders around the world, and, and, and it's, it's a vast majority of them who has the founder's disease. But what has happened with, with Mikkel lately, and which I think is one of the major successes of Eleven today, is that he is doing exactly what he's doing right now. He lets supplier do what they do best, tapping into his vision. And when you get that to play, it actually works. Then it's, it's a rough thing pleasing a founder's vision, but it's impossible if the founder isn't open to hear what other people say. And I think that is what, what makes Michael and, and Eleven's success story continue going forward, uh, which I think is a more relevant answer than how this process per se was. There, there's a bunch of people who can explain that later <laughs> on of the symposiums. Well, that's nice to say. Mika, we got to know each other over the phone, and I have to say that I feel a little bit sad that it's over now. Uh, but uh, I hope that we can follow you and have you on our stage soon again. Thank you so much for coming, Mika. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>